Tea Soul Pop, Season 9, Episode 5. Hello and welcome to Tea Soul Pop, the mini podcast for busy teachers. My name is Laura and joining me today to talk about becoming a legal English teacher is Natasha Costello. Natasha is the co-author of Practical English Language Skills for Lawyers, as well as a legal English educator herself. In this episode, Natasha shares her journey into becoming a teacher, as well as gives insights into students' needs and what happens in a legal English classroom. Let's join the conversation where I asked Natasha to share how she got into teaching. I have a background in law and education. So I started my career as a solicitor in England as a practicing lawyer. And then I became a senior lecturer at Manchester Metropolitan University. So that's where I did my teaching qualification. And I was teaching law and legal skills, so oral communication skills and legal writing skills. And then about 15 years ago, I moved to France and I followed my husband with his job. And really, it was through word of mouth and a language school that I discovered French lawyers who were looking for help with their English communication skills. And that's how I started teaching legal English. And I also found some work teaching legal English at some universities in Paris as well. What is the role of English for, and how is it relevant to lawyers in France? Because I would have thought that would have been, they would have just operated in French. That is such a good question. Yes. Um, so I think that's what French lawyers always thought as well. So I would say a <laughs> lot of, alone. <laughs> no, a lot of my clients, particularly, you know, they didn't learn English uh, when they were studying their law degree. They do now. Uh, but I think there are two things. One is often they find they're working uh, for clients who are then bought by an American or English company or something like that. And so they, they discover they have to deal with, for example, the human resources manager in England. And so they need to speak English with the client. The other thing is that English can also be the the common language. So they'll be dealing in an international environment and perhaps the lawyer on the other side is uh, an Italian lawyer or a German lawyer and the common language they have is English. Right, I see. So it kind of accommodates for the, the global world that yeah, we live in absolutely. and the interactions lawyers are going to be having in their day-to-day lives. Yeah, and just the fact that uh, global business, you know, it, everything is so much more international now. And, and that's the same for, for lawyers. Even if they're dealing with French law, they have to explain that in English sometimes. Oh, wow. You see, it's a whole world I'm not familiar with. Um, I'm really interested to learn a bit more about other paths into teaching legal English. Of course, there's your path where you started as a solicitor, then moved into education. Do educators join via other routes into this field? Yes. So I would perhaps start by saying I think there are two main groups of legal English learners. So you have legal professionals, as I mentioned, so lawyers working in law firms or in-house lawyers working in a company. On the other hand, you've got university law students. Uh, So you've got those two main groups. And some people like me have a, a legal background and then they go into teaching, but other people might be, for example, business English teachers, and then they uh, have some clients who are lawyers and they might decide, oh, I quite like teaching lawyers. And so then they start to specialize in legal English. So I know people who've done that. And at the university level, you have some linguists or some people who've specialized in English and they can be teaching at a university. And again, perhaps they end up teaching some law students and they like that. And so they specialize in legal English. And uh, I'm a member, I'm on the board of an association called ULITA, the European Legal English Teachers Association. And I think that's reflected in our membership, which is really diverse. We have lawyers, we have linguists, we have lawyer linguists, we have translators. And uh, I think that's great because we can all learn from each other. That's wonderful. It's such a diverse group of people Mm. that can end up taking this path in teaching legal English. 
for those, including myself, that don't know much about legal English and teaching the subject, could you give some insights into what it involves and, you know, the type of input we give students and maybe what we're preparing students for? Yeah, big question. Yeah. Um, okay, so again, if I take those two different groups, with legal professionals, it can involve helping them perhaps to prepare for client meetings in English or writing emails and things that business English teachers would be familiar with. But then lawyers also have other skills that they need to practice in English. So it could be contract drafting or contract negotiation. Or for example, I had to help a lawyer prepare for an arbitration hearing in English. So that was really interesting. Um, And also lawyers tend to specialize in a particular area of law. So for example, they could be uh, an employment lawyer or an intellectual property lawyer. And so it might be about helping them with vocabulary for a particular area of law. So that's sort of the legal professionals. And then with university students, I think that can be very varied. I mean, often that's more a case of teaching vocabulary and grammar. But even if I'm doing that, I try to make it very practical and I try to sort of bring real life scenarios into the classroom to practice the language. Uh, But at some universities, the legal English programs will look at the legal systems in the United States and England, for example. So it could be learning about the court system, the different types of legal professions, the the constitution, there can be elements of legal history and even politics as well. So it can be very varied and quite interesting. And perhaps the final point I should mention is that there is a test of legal English which exists. Um, So we, we know it as the acronym TOLES, T-O-L-E-S, Test of Legal English Skills. And in some universities, they will run a program that's designed to help prepare the students for that test. So, yeah, lots of lots of different things that are involved in legal English teaching. When you put it that way, like it doesn't sound any different from any other kind of English for specific purposes. Of course, there's elements of vocabulary and grammar that's specific to that context. But when you were mentioning like preparing for certain meetings and um, court hearings and stuff, it's very situational, communicate, communicative teaching and setting up students for success to be able to navigate those scenarios with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think uh, all I would add is that, you know, lawyers do have these specific skills like contract drafting and, you, you know, there is specific legal language or language that lawyers use. Um, and so perhaps that that's just the, one of the, the differences. But yeah. Could you give us a little insight, a taster of like, for example, a lesson on something legal English (laughs) um, would contain like maybe this example of grammar or vocabulary. Do any particular examples come to mind? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I can give you an example. So um, one of the things I teach a lot is the language of contract law because contracts are a big part of a a lawyer's job in, in lots of different areas of law. And so with contract law, we can talk about the language for deciding whether you have a contract, there's certain vocabulary uh, for that. Um, But I'm thinking in particular, if you think of grammar, I think in particular of of the language for giving advice to a client, perhaps about a contract um, and how you formulate your, your sentences for that. So these words like, I suggest doing something, I recommend doing something. Uh, And again, what I would do is whether it's a university student or a legal professional is have a a real life scenario, a client comes to see you, this is, uh, they've got uh, an issue with the contract and uh, can you advise them uh, what they can do? And so then they can practice using that language. For people listening who may be thinking, oh, you know, I'm a business English teacher and I'd, I'd like to explore uh, teaching legal English and like developing my skills to potentially explore this avenue. Or maybe there's actually legal English teachers who are listening now thinking, I actually want to explore other avenues 
of law, like you mentioned, uh, to expand my repertoire of law, different types of lawyers I work with. What are some resources that um, these teachers can go to to start developing those skills? So first of all, I will mention again, ULITA, the European Legal English Teachers Association. As I said, I'm on the, the board of that association and it's been around for nearly 20 years now. And I mention that because uh, we have monthly teacher network meetings for our members and we usually have a legal English teaching theme. So last month it was teaching legal writing, uh, but really it's just an informal way of getting together and exchanging ideas and experiences and sharing resources. So I think that's really good. We also have uh, an in-person conference once a year as well. Um, so in September, that will be in uh, Brussels. So that's, a, that's, that's really helpful, I think, for, for teachers. Um, in terms of resources, I think when I, when I started teaching legal English, I got hold of a book by Rupert Haig, which was called Legal English, but it's now called International Legal English. And uh, I think that's very useful as a reference book because he really highlights the vocabulary and grammar that are more specific to legal English as opposed to other types of English. Uh, so I think that's a good book. And I have to mention the book that I've co-written with Louise Kulbicki. So we've written a book called practical English language skills for lawyers. And that was published last year. And that's a, a course book uh, which can be used for self-study or for teachers in the classroom. And uh, it's different from other uh, legal English course books because each chapter is based on a skill. So for example, telephone calls or client meetings or contract drafting. Uh, but the reason I want to mention it is because we have also produced a set of teacher notes to go with our book to give teachers uh, ideas for how to adapt some of the activities in the book uh, to their lessons and also for extra links for teachers as well, links to extra resources. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for those suggestions. And as always for our listeners, those links to the organization, um, Ulita, and also those, the, your book and the other book you uh, recommended are all in the show notes so people can find them easily. Natasha, it's been lovely talking to you today and discovering more about this world of legal English. This is the first time we've talked about this on the Teeth Pop podcast. So thank you so much for breaking the ice and opening up a space for conversation. Thank you for having me. It's been great to talk about uh, teaching legal English. And if any listeners want to know more, they can contact me. That's fine. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer or you have a topic that you'd like us to talk about on TSL Pop, then you can contact us via Instagram, Facebook or the website tslpop.com. Finally, you can support the work we do at TSL Pop by leaving a rating and review wherever you listen to the podcast, by sharing today's episode with your teaching community or by even buying us a coffee at ko forward slash TSL Pop. <laughs>